Hello friends, embarrassingly bad at taking his own advice here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on 4 tricks that Miracle uses that you should too. Number 1. He plays as if the worst case scenario is exactly what is going to happen in the game. So here we have a clip in front of us. This is from Nigma versus Alliance. This is a fairly recent game. I believe this was in Epic League. And Miracle is playing his patented anti-mage. He has no teleport scroll. It's 11 minutes in, so he's not really even looking to fight, even if he did have his TP scroll. And his team is currently taking a team fight bottom. So what does he want to do? Well, he wants to pressure the other side of the map, so that way he's not just completely useless and basically crippling his team here. So watch what he does. Obviously pushing in the creeps, starts hitting the tower, and look at these little micro movements that he does. So he cuts this tree, and then he uses an iron talon on the other tree. Now what's so special about these trees? I would say a, a large portion of people that are watching this will know exactly why he's cutting these trees. It's because that's the only location where somebody can TP into this tower where you won't see their TP. And so that is a danger zone. That is a place that he is afraid of. And so to eliminate that threat, he just cuts those trees. And the reason that I'm showing you this is because the concept behind it, I think, is really important. And what we're about to see after this is just another, basically, implementation of this concept. And it's this idea of assuming that the enemy team is going to do the right thing and just planning for it. So this eliminates that plan. So even though you could maybe think in this game, they're probably not going to TP in because there's this fight happening. What if they do? What if they do and then this is the one death that, that makes the game hard for you? You want to avoid that because it's so easy. All it requires is one Quelling Blade and one Iron Talon. And so look what he does here. Once again, we have a couple of scenarios for how the enemy team could possibly kill him right now. Either they teleport into the tower where he will see them because not only did he cut these trees, he's also standing where he has a line of sight of all of the possible TP locations, but he's not walking all the way over to the right here because it's also possible that the enemy team TPs to the outpost and sets up a flank on him. So basically, he's playing with an equal distance between these two zones where the enemy team can come from and kill him. And he does this all the time. You see Miracle doing this when he is sitting and farming jungle camps. You see him doing this when he's pushing waves, when he's cutting waves. He is doing this 100% of the time. I want to quickly show you a clip from a game that I played where I actually implemented this because I do realize that in Dota, there are so many hypotheticals being thrown around. You should do this. You should do that. I want to show you that it's not baloney, that this actually does work out. It's not just, oh, Miracle cuts these trees, but it never actually results in him surviving. So here is exactly where I implemented this thing that I learned from Miracle. I'm playing Pudge. The enemy team has a Treant Protector up here using Meteor Hammer on the wave. I knew this. Invokers respawning. I knew this. The enemy team, they were all out of the bot lane. These were all things that I knew. I wasn't sure where they were. Were they defensively farming their triangle? Was there an ancient stack? Were they, you know, just sitting in their base? I had no idea. I actually had zero information this game, but I was thinking, okay, these guys are bored. They have kill heroes. They've got Lashrac. They've got with the Yules. They have this global ancient apparition ice blast. They have a uh, Quas Wex into Exhort Invoker with an Orchid who's respawning. These guys are going to run at me. I'm the only person playing an unsafe area. So honestly, I got to say, I, I didn't think they were going to run at me. I just played as if they were going to, because if they did, I would die, because I'm a big, fat, slow pudge, and God knows they want to kill me. So instead of taking this creep wave and farming it directly where it meets the other creep wave, I grab it, and I just run it slowly to my tower, because even if they do run at me, well, they're not going to catch me, because we're roughly the same movement speed, and I'm running away from them. If I turned and farmed this creep wave, and they were there, I would die. Now if they go on me, I'm in my tower, and like I said, I didn't have a great read on this in the game. I wasn't actually sure out of 50 50 maybe worse than that uh were they chasing me but then i looked at the replay and i noticed that they actually did run at me they had lashrak running at me this whole time invoker respawned immediately teleported to the shrine to run at me treant's still just sitting up there in the trees so they've wasted the resources of four of their heroes to come and run at me here as a position five useless pudge number two he kills catapults before jungling or if he is in the jungle, he will come back to the lane to kill a catapult, particularly at the five minute mark. So here we have a game where Miracle was playing Faceless Void versus Venomancer. 
This is an incredibly bad matchup for Faceless Void. Uh, you can see here in a second probably just how sad this is for Miracle. He can't even fight the wards. He doesn't want to walk up and take damage. So why is he here? Why is he subjecting himself to this? Well, you can see he's blocking the creeps right now because what he's trying to do is he's trying to drag that catapult into the tower because realistically, most heroes can't push very fast, especially Venomancer, who has this fantastic piercing damage from the wards. So he's extremely good at killing creeps, but he's not good at killing towers. He actually does very minimal damage to towers because that's just what piercing damage does. So Miracle stays here. He kills this catapult, which means Venomancer is going to be a lot slower paced of a hero in this game. And then he even pairs this with a really nice timing on getting the Chronosphere up, having Kuroki here in the lane, and he does uh, actually chrono the Venomancer before leaving the lane. So that, that's just kind of a, a bit of a bonus. Uh, he didn't need that. I, I really think if he was uh, some Sven hero, maybe some hero that's not as easy to kill a Venomancer, you know, Chronosphere makes it quite easy. Uh, he would probably just go kill the Catapult and then jungle. But you can see that the moment that he uses that Chrono, he goes and he hits the jungle. Number three, this guy doesn't go back to Fountain. He actually would rather die then go back to Fountain, and I've seen this in a lot of games. But first, a little bit of a bonus clip. You can see Miracle in this game on Spectre, who, you know, would traditionally be considered a fairly defensive hero. He actually shows up to the mid-tower to push with the catapults. Miracle is very obsessive when it comes to these catapults. At the very least, he tries to force the enemy to make rotations to deal with those catapults. You can see that he doesn't go and try to fight the enemy team. He just leaves. He just says, okay, they're all there. That's good. That's what we wanted to achieve. Anyway, back to the point, uh, you can see that, so he stacks up this camp, and then he walks into this team fight that's happening here at the rune, walks in, blade mails, gets a good amount of damage on the enemy team, and he barely survives. It's actually insane calculations that he was able to make. And, and this is where it gets crazy. This guy is at a sliver of HP, and he just starts jungling, like nothing is happening. Like his team isn't fighting directly over here in some crazy epic battle. Like, he didn't just about die. This guy is on the brink of dying, and he's jungling. But as a carry, you don't really want to go back to base because you want to be farming as much as possible. You want to have more items than the enemy carry. But you also don't want to just feed because, as a carry, you don't want to die. And then it hit me. And then I realized exactly why he does this. Because he knows that he's not going to want to fight until he has haunt anyway. In the next little while, he's going to be taking safe farm in his triangle, behind his team. And so, if the enemy team does end up in a scenario where they actually kill him, they're doing it with a five-man rotation. They're doing it with everybody there. And that's kind of okay. Even if you're a carry, if the enemy team is having to make their way into your triangle with a huge smoke, with an alchemist, that's fine. Look at the camps that he's jungling at. He's not jungling right in front of the enemy team's face. Maybe if he had more HP, he would. So, essentially, his low HP changed his decision-making for what camps he was going to farm, rather than going back to base so that way he could farm more greedy camps. Number four, Miracle always contributes to team fights in some way. So, Miracle, when it comes to farming, because he's a carry player, he has two modes. Either he is in fight farm mode, or he is in evade farm mode, where he is evading fights. Whenever he is in fight farm mode, there are two ways that he will show up to a fight. A, he will farm his way to a fight, and he will kind of soft commit to it. He will eventually make his way there casually, but he won't TP. Or he will farm away from a fight. He will keep looking at the fight and seeing what's going on. And then if it looks good, he will TP in and commit to the fight. So here we can see the very first mode that he's in where he is looking to possibly fight. You can see if I click back a little bit here that he is moving his camera to see what's happening. He's clicking on S4. He's checking his items. He's probably communicating with his team about the status, or maybe they're communicating and he's just listening. Undying drops a tombstone, everything gets committed onto him, the tombstone's doing really well, uh, S4 ends up dying, he's getting assist gold. This is great. This is all about farming, remember. It's all about just being here, contributing, not being useless, and picking up some of that assist gold. But it starts looking bad. Ember Spirit comes in, he's got a DD, the entire enemy team is there. He's an anti-mage. He doesn't want to fight. The only reason that he contributed to that fight bot was once again, 
like Miracle does, he wants to make the enemy team waste as many of their resources as possible, so he shows up to it, it looks like a big 5v5 is happening, and then he TPs top after the enemy team commits to it. And now, he enters into this second mode. Even though he's an anti-mage, who typically, this is not a hero you would expect to fight, he does end up fighting, and then he goes top and evades. And now we enter into the very first clip that we talked about, where he is doing the tree cutting shenanigans, and he just beelines it to a lane and pushes somewhere else. So this is the second way that he contributes to team fights. Either he shows up to the fight casually because he's a carry, or he will go to the complete opposite side of the map and he will contribute to the team fight by taking a tower somewhere else. Because at least, even if the fight goes horribly, they get a trade on the other side of the map. I want to show you Miracle doing this on a far more traditional carry that's not exactly sick at killing creep waves or showing up to fights like an anti-mage is, uh, because anti-mage of course has blink, you know, Spectre can't really just make her way to a fight with Dagger. If she doesn't have haunt, which he doesn't, then, you know, you're kind of screwed. So, uh, here you can see that Miracle clearly doesn't want to fight the enemy team. Uh, I would say it's probably because he has a Shadow Demon mid. His team is just kind of casually sieging bot. They've got an Underlord. They're totally cool with ulting out, possibly. Uh, and you could see that with all of this shit going on bot, there's this big fight breaking out. He beelines it to the lane, uses his Spectral Dagger. He doesn't just walk up and slowly blade mail it down because in these moments, it's all about timing. It's all about pressure. One or two seconds of a creep wave hitting this top tower could mean uh, getting a little bit more damage, or it could mean somebody showing up to this, uses Dagger once again, doesn't spare any resources, and then you can see with this camp, I would imagine he does not use Dagger. Now, why doesn't he use Dagger on those camps, but he did on the lane creeps? Because he sees it as really important to beeline it to the goddamn lane and push it as fast as humanly possible because that's his way of contributing to his team. So I would like to do a quick shout out at the end here to uh, Pip Flanagan uh, and the uh, Flanagan Corporation. Uh, I appreciate your support. Uh, you've been integral in uh, making these videos and uh, everything I said about the hobo situation was false. Uh, there is no Flanagan Empire. Uh, everything that the Flanagans do is 100% uh, legal and uh, uh, things are good for me, guys. Things are good and uh, I appreciate uh, everything. So uh, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, uh, that would uh, definitely help a lot at this point. Uh, it's been helping a lot and uh, make sure to check out my Patreon uh, where there are updated tier lists for all the best heroes in Dota 2. Uh, so thank you for watching. I appreciate you, and I hope to see you in another video.